frustration and anger seen and heard on Parliament Hill this week, 1,000 days after Iran shot down Ukrainian Airlines flight PS752 and weeks after Masa Amini's death in Iran. Earlier this week, the federal government announced a new round of sanctions, and on Friday, Ottawa went even further. The IRGC leadership are terrorists. The IRGC is a terrorist organization. The designation of a regime is a permanent decision. This means that more than 10,000 members of the IRGC leadership, for example, will be inadmissible to Canada forever. Masi Alinejad has been a voice for women in Iran, sharing moments like this on her social media. The Iranian activist has been living in exile since 2009. Back in 2014, a picture of her without a hijab sparked a movement online. She has since continued to speak up despite a recent foiled kidnapping plot against her. Masi Alinejad, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. We're entering the fourth week now since uh, Masa Amini's death. There was again a call for mass demonstrations in Iran over the weekend. How are you feeling about what you continue to see, especially from, from young people? Um, look, I have different feeling. Uh, when I see that people are being injured, being killed, I'm uh, really speechless that uh, this regime brutally, savagely killing its teenagers. But at the same time, I receive uh, messages, videos from young school girls saying that we're ready to die, but we don't want to live under humiliation. So it shows you that these uh, young students, they are fed up with the Islamic Republic and they already made up their mind that they're not going to give up. Just today, I received a picture from uh, 18 year old student and saying that I'm wounded, but unbowed, and I'll take back to the street, although her face was full of, uh, you know, bullets. And that's quite sad, but at the same time, it shows you the power of Iranian young generation. There, there are estimates from the Iran Human Rights Group based in Norway that at least 185 people have been killed. And as you say, many, many more injured, arrested. D does the defiance and the courage um, surprise you that this is happening in this way? We have all experienced the brutality of this regime. You remember in 2019, bloody November, 1,500 people got killed. To be honest, what now surprised me, it's not the brutality of the Islamic Republic. It is the bravery of the young generation. Yeah. It is the fearless young generation. These are the TikTok generation. Look, Mahsa Amini was only 22 year old. She was not part of uh, the protest. But after her brutal death, now you see Nika Shah Karami, only 17 year old. Hadith Najafi, only 20 year old. Ghazale, Sarina was only 16 year old. And when you go to your, their YouTube and TikTok, you see that they were aware of the risk. They were brave teenagers. And they were saying that for years that the school uh, brainwashing them and they don't want this. They want freedom and dignity. That surprised me that how the young generation, teenagers sacrificing their life, even pushing their teachers, pushing their yeah. parents and telling them that let's take to the streets. This is called a revolution. You, you've called on women around the world to uh, to support this, obviously, by cutting their hair or, or taking to the streets as well. Uh, obviously, everyone is, is watching and, and um, with interest, but I wonder whether you think the world is doing enough in order to make sure that this actually results in some sort of change. Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. The soli solidarity itself is beautiful. I, we, we see this for the first time, that the whole world is watching us, is watching Iranian uh, revolution, which led by women inside Iran. But at the same time, I think this is not enough. This is not enough. Look, um, I see many female politicians cutting their hair. This is beautiful when actress, well-known athletes, activists, they're cutting their hair because their job is to make awareness. But for politicians, this is not enough. We mm. need action. We need female politicians or other politicians in the West, instead of cutting their hair, to cut their ties. 
with the murderers of teenagers inside Iran. That's actually the right step that they can take. Let me tell you another thing. Right now, the family members of teenagers are being brought on TV to do forced confession. Nika Shakaram, his mother, 16 year old, she was bravely actually exposing the corruption and saying that we were forced, our family members were forced to uh, go on TV. So that is why I call on female politicians, I call on all politicians around the world, take action, ban Iranian main propaganda tool, the Iranian state television. I'm actually calling Canadian government. Where is Justin Trudeau? Where is the first lady of Canada? They can do a lot. Believe me, if it was a Muslim woman being killed just because of wanting to wear hijab, Justin Trudeau would take stronger action. But yeah. now, yeah. I, well, I wanted to ask you about some of the action that the government did take after being under a fair amount of pressure to do more. Um, the government moved on Friday to prevent top members of the Iranian regime, um, obviously the IRGC, um, from entering Canada. And, and the foreign, the deputy minister did, the deputy prime minister rather, did say uh, the IRGC is a terrorist entity. There's also more sanctions and money to go after people. What do you make of, of that response from Canada, given that we have one of the largest communities um, of Iranians outside of Iran in Toronto. That's a very good step. I mean, to be honest, now a lot of Iranians are happy that finally Canada is taking a strong yeah. action because, as you know, that the family members of the Ukrainian airplane who got killed, they live in Canada. They are yeah. under death threats, but they're not giving up. But we want Justin Trudeau speak loudly, condemn Islamic terror, be tough on Islamic Republic, and put the Revolutionary Guards on the terrorist list. Right now, the U.S. government actually taking action. They put uh, the Revolution of God on, on a terrorist. But travel ban itself is not enough. We want to see that the rest of the world actually accept that and call it a revolution. Mm -hmm. Because many politicians trying to say that, um, you know, this is a movement that Iranian women want to get rid of compulsory hijab or abolishing morality. This is wrong. People are facing guns and bullets and they say that we want to end gender apartheid regime. And the West must accept that, must recognize that. You, you yourself have been the target of the regime. Uh, there was a foiled kidnapping plot against you uh, in 2021. There was a man carrying a loaded gun arrested near your home this summer. Are you afraid for your life, even though you are not there um, and you are still speaking out in this way? To be honest, no. No, I'm not scared of my life. I mean, it's not just me. They went after my family. They put my brother in prison for two years to punish me. They brought my sister on TV to disown me publicly. They integrated my 70-year-old mother to take me to Turkey. They were trying to kidnap me from Turkey, and they were failed. That is why the FBI said that they charged four people who were trying to kidnap me from New York. The FBI arrested a man with loaded gun in front of my house in Brooklyn. What does this show? It shows you that... As far as the Islamic Republic is in power, none of us in America, in Canada, won't be safe. But that is, doesn't scare me. I'm ready to die. I sacrifice my life to give voice to voiceless people inside Iran. But what scares me to see that the Western countries keep silent and watching this happening. We had massive protests in the past. Why we were not successful? Because anytime when we manage to shake this regime, we see that like the Western government go and shake the same hand of the same regime. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm scared to see that this time these uh, revolution is going to fail if the Western country just focus on nuclear deal and abandon Iranian people. Iranian people don't want the Western country to save them. What we want, we want the Western country to save the Islamic Republic. The Islamic Republic is like ISIS. We have to take a strong action. You're very passionate about it. I appreciate you making the case uh, here on uh, on this channel. Thank you so much, Masa Alunichad. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm I'm really pleased that Canadian people are giving voice to Iranians. Thank you.